give you a personal relationship with God, right? Yeah, I actually Is said it? the exact opposite. I said Christianity just predicts that the um, creator of the universe should be constantly reaching out towards non-believers. Okay. Is it a real how, relation? Yeah. Okay, and so how, I'm just wondering how... I'm just wondering how that matches up with your Catholicism. Um, my Catholicism predicts that the creator of the universe is inter interested in human affairs. He's interested in people's salvation, and he's constantly reaching out towards non-believers to try to draw them towards, you know, um, himself. Yeah, I mean, you, you keep talking about this idea and personal relationship and all that, but as I read the theologians and doctors of the church, uh, they say that God is not actually related to creation at all. And there's no relation uh, between God and creation. I'd love to ask him a question. Well, I just want um, to hear his response I, to that. What, what you're saying, the Roman Catholics say that there's no relationship with, when there's no personal relationship with, between God and creation? Yeah, there's no real relation, yeah. That's right. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I mean, can I, I, I can just I think can I read you a text from Thomas Aquinas, who's a doctor of your church? Okay, you can read a text from Aquinas. You can read a text from Augustine. I don't think that really reflects mainstream. Like, I I think what it is mainstream. Is, you're gonna read uh, a quote, which doesn't reflect their their um views, the views they really held. I think it's gonna be a quote mine, to be honest. No, it's not a quote mine. Anyway, I'll read it for the audience since you're not interested. It says, as the creature proceeds from God in diversity of nature, God is outside the order of the whole creation, nor does any relation to the cre creature arise from his nature. For he does not produce the creature by necessity of his nature, but by his intellect and will, as is above explained. Therefore, there is no real relation in God to the creature. Yeah. Okay. So you're talking about like, do the, do we share in the essence of God or or something like that? Because I could just use the same no, argument against the Muslim. The Muslim the believes. Essence of God. It's not the argument. Wait. Just let me let me finish though. No, but you're because misrepresenting the, believes... the quote and what's what's being said. Okay. I'm not sure why you're interrupting. I just so told the you Muslim... why because you're misrepresenting what I said. Okay. Well, it was more a question, right? So I'm, it's, questions are not misrep misrepresentations. So the Muslims believe that the nature of God is ineffable. It's not like we can actually grasp the nature of God because God is wholly unlike anything in creation. So if God is wholly unlike anything in creation, we can't even grasp his true nature. So it just seems to me like the Muslim God would have more issues with having uh, a No, first of all, first humanity. of all, you're you're talking about the Muslim conception of God, but with all due respect, I don't think you understand the Muslim conception with of God. With all due respect, the point I don't is, think you understand the Roman the, Catholic the point is, conception of God. I do. No, I do. Don't. I've actually studied it in quite a bit. I've I've actually studied it in quite a bit of detail. Yeah, so I'm sure you have. The point is, yeah, I actually have. So hey, I, honestly, point, I the, told you, Ag Agamon, I told you uh, we have a heavyweight on the stage. You don't want to be having. Well, I'm just telling you. So. I'm just telling you that there is a position of the Roman Catholic Church which is called the doctrine of no real relations in which it very clearly states that God is not related to creation at all whatsoever. There's a one way direction in which man can be related to God, but God cannot possibly be related to his creation. And that's very clear. You find that in Aquinas who quotes Augustine and there's, there's a consensus amongst the Western fathers who represent the church in this regard. Now you may be ignorant of that, but that's that's your issue, not mine, sir. Okay, okay. I read so, the material. So let's say I pulled up codes by Aquinas that humans are have a personal relationship with God. Would that change your views at all? God, or are your changing God, are, are your views immutable? It's very clear. God can be it's very clear that a human or that creation can be related to God, but God cannot ha be related. To creation there's a one-way direction it doesn't go both ways and that is aquinas's position yeah sorry then if i pulled up a quote from aquinas that god loves humanity or the roman catholic church thinks that god loves humanity 
would that change your views at all or are you are your views immutable no because i can explain to you what aquinas means by god god loving humanity and i can read that right now for oh, you if you okay, want. okay so it wouldn't change your views no because i actually know what it means merely saying that god loves humanity is not what you actually mean by it there's not a real relation i see between god and creation yeah, so love isn't love aquinas must mean something else by love yeah, he does. I Jake, can read I it for you, you should... if you. I, mean, I can, like I can a... make, read it for you if you want. That's my sure, point. Sure, read it for me. <laughs> but but, what's that? No, I was just saying that's I'm like sorry? a standard Neoplatonism kind of argument that develops there. Yeah. So, so um, here's what where's here's what Aquinas says, and I never said that Aquinas says that God doesn't love you, but you have to understand what it means. So he says, God loves all existing things, for all existing things, insofar as they exist, are good. Since the existence of a thing is itself a good, and likewise, whatever perfection it possesses. Now, it has been shown above that God's will is the cause of all things. It must needs be, therefore, that a thing that, ha that has existence, or any kind of good, only inasmuch as it w was willed by God, to every existing thing, then, God wills some good. Hence, since to love anything is nothing else than to will good to that thing, it is manifest that God loves everything that exists. So that's the position of Aquinas, is that God's love is merely creating and willing your existence. But there's no real relation between God and creation, as I stated in the previous quote. Now, I can show you even from um, theologians admitting this, uh, Dr. Stephen Nemish comments on this view and explains why this view of God's love is deeply problematic. So then can I read from the Summa Theologia? That's what I just Since, read from. Okay, so objection. Um, it says God contains no love. For in God there are no passions. Now love is a passion, therefore love is not in God. I answer that we must need to assert that in God there is love, because love is the first movement of the will and of every appetitive fac faculty. Since the acts of will and every appetitive faculty tend towards good and evil as, as their proper objects, and since good, essentially, and good is essentially and especially the object of the will of the appetite. It follows that the acts of the will and the appetite must be good and blah, 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 blah. Um, and it further goes on to say that God's love for humanity is actually greater than um, God's love for... Well, then it says God has actually a perfect love for humanity. Yeah, I already, I already read what he means by love. So... He means by willing something and creating creation. That's what he means. But there's no, there's no real relation, or uh, as I said, between God and creation, even to the radical extent that the second person of the Trinity, in light of the incarnation, is not even really related to the human nature that he possesses. Okay. 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 So. So. So ben, then when you will something good towards somebody else, you're not really loving them, right? Um, that's not sufficient for, for what love is supposed to be because you're missing the intentional aspect of it, that there's an intention that is directed at the other. And that's what is lacking the difference in the between concept. willing good towards somebody and intending intention? Yeah, so do you believe God has intentions? No, I'm agnostic on that. It's a complicated issue. Um, the question yeah. wasn't that. Well, the that's question the point. was, what if is I... the difference between willing good towards somebody and intending good towards okay. somebody? Yeah, I'll explain it. Because under the position that Aquinas is explaining, God's love is the same whether you exist or not. So it's like telling you, it's like me telling my wife that my love for her or my love would be identical whether she existed or not. That's the difference. 
Well, what's your point? Because, like, let's say your wife just died one day. Would your love change? Love for her change? Like, would would your love diminish? No, but I'm saying if she never existed, if she never existed and my love was identical, whether she existed or not, then that doesn't seem like the type of love that most people talk about when they speak about love. There's supposed to be an intentional action that is directed at something outside of itself. And I'm saying that in case of God, at least on the Catholic view, that's not there. I don't understand what you mean by that, because do you mean by okay, let me if give you an never example, existed? Then. Well, let me let me just tell you what I don't understand. Do you mean if by never existed, do you mean like a moment um, when God was alone? Um, like a, a moment in time when God was alone, his love was different. Like his love was, um, I don't know, uh, was the same as now. Sorry, say, like, what, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? I'm sorry. Just yeah, clarify because God's God's one act is identical to Himself, according to Aquinas. Do you know that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he, he his one act of love is identical whether or not creation exists. Okay, but is that supposed to be a substantive critique of of like Catholic yeah, it theology? Is. That it is. love it is. It's therefore. A serious critique. Okay, okay, so let's say you love your wife even prior to her existing. And let's say she began to exist and your love wouldn't change. Okay, that's supposed to be a knockdown argument against my religion. It's supposed to show that the type of love that you were initially expressing in terms of a direct personal relationship between God and creation is not actually in line with the Catholic understanding of God's love. It's quite different. Yeah, I mean... I suppose, like, if I if I really thought about it, I mean, I suppose I would see maybe that, like, yeah, I, I guess that would be a good point if I really had to hold to divine, simple, like, absolute divine simplicity. But I'm not even sure if I hold to absolute divine simplicity. In what and sense? And by the way, a lot of Roman Catholics don't. In what sense? So what, what view do you hold to? Um... I'm not sure if God changes, like as, as humanity, if God is completely impassable. I, I'm not sure if God changes. Well, that's when Catholic humanity, dogma. Um, so, okay. So, like I said, a, Rom, a lot of Roman Catholics don't hold to absolute divine simplicity. Um, I don't know um, of Catholics that will say that God changes or that he's passable. I'm not aware of that. In fact, I think that's heretical. Oh, it's heretical. Okay. Yeah, I, I it is. That's why I challenged you from the beginning. Issue. That's why I'm well, challenging you from finish. the beginning. I, I said I'm agnostic on the issue. I haven't really explored it in detail to, to say one way or the other. And I only like to hold to, um, you know, um, doctrines that I've explored in detail. And that's the one I, I, I really haven't. So what if you found out, so, this is my question, because you asked me earlier. What if you found out that what I'm saying is true, and it actually is an accurate representation of Aquinas' teaching, and that you cannot believe that God is passable or changes in any respect with respect to creation. Would you then accept that or would you yeah. renounce Catholicism? Well, I mean, I would have to first of all see that that's act like an absolute dogma of the Catholic Church. Yeah, I'm Church, saying if you did that God see that. Is well, let, let, me, let me just finish though. So I would have to see first in its absolute dogma. They would have to. They would have. It would have to be a complete heresy for me to say, "Oh no, God is impassable. God can change in some respect with humanity." Second, I would have to accept your argument that uh, there's some incoherence about loving somebody that even prior to their existence. I, I'm I'm not really seeing the incoherence to be honest, because I, I can see how you can love somebody even if like prior to their existence and your love wouldn't change in any way prior, like when they began to exist, because it's like willing good towards somebody else. If you have perfect love, your your love wouldn't change. Um, so so I'm, I'm not really seeing the incoherence, but let's say I saw the incoherence. Then the next step would be: Is this is this like somebody something that Catholic Church would like kick me out for disbelieving? I I'm sort of skeptical they would. Um. So, so I don't I don't find this argument very convincing right now. Of okay. course, I haven't okay. read much about it, but I, okay, I would so, I would have to read. So, so my point is: 
if you did find that it was dogma? That's, that's, that's my question. And you went on for a long time. And that's why I was interrupting you. I'm asking you if you did find out that it was Catholic dogma, such that if you did believe it, that you would be considered to hold a heretical belief, mm-hmm. would you then change your belief or would you then maintain that belief and reject Catholicism because of that belief? Well, that's why I was telling you that's contingent on whether I found some incoherence about some like impassibility, God's impassibility, uh, God's love being impassable in such a way, which I'm not sure there is, but it, let's say I found some incoherence about it then I would probably would change my religious beliefs. Oh, wow. Okay, I appreciate that. Now, well, I think it's very clear that uh, what I was just explaining and, and the way that you were expressing God's love and his personal relationship with you and other Christians previously is not the picture that is actually understood by the Catholic Church. And I'm simply saying to you that if that is the case, then... There is, there is going to be some question about the incoherence because that's what the church fathers understood, that that view would be problematic to hold that God is passable or changes in some respect, such that they understood that if God was really related to creation, then that would mean that God changed because that would be a new relation which is formed that didn't exist eternally because you cannot be really related to something that doesn't exist. And that's why they said that God cannot really be related to creation. However, creation can be related to God. It's a one-way direction. So that's the reasoning behind it. Now, you can reject that, but I'm just telling you that's what the doctrine is. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And let's suppose I, like, I thought through this and I read a lot of things about it. And I came to the conclusion that it's incoherent. Well, wouldn't it be incoherent under any concept of God, though? Because, like, I understood God to, to be a perfect entity. And let's say you take something to be perfect as long as it's impassable, as long as it's, like, immutable. Wouldn't that be a um, problem for the Muslim concept of God? No, first of all, there are different conceptions. We could talk about them. But it wouldn't be problematic for my view because I think that God is really related to creation. And that goes back to the original point is, I think that God really does love me, but I don't think under the Aquinas' view and what I just explained, God really does love you. So if you think that God really does love you, then you ought to reject and abandon that position. That's the point. Well, that is if I find some incoherence in it, which I don't currently see in the way you explained it. Um, I do have major issues with the the Muslim concept of God because I just don't think it's a perfect entity. And I, like, I... I wanted to outline the argument half an hour ago prior to you giving an argument against Roman Catholic Catholicism. Yeah, but so I don't think you that... I don't think you've really understood the point fully because you're saying that you don't understand sure, 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 sure. you don't understand where the incoherence is. The incoherence is that if God is supposed to be impassable and immutable, that if he forms new relations with creation, then that would negate the fact that he's utterly changeless and utterly impassable. On the other hand, the idea or notion that you talked about of love of God directed at creation seems to require that. And so that's where the conflict is, is that you either have to give up on divine uh, changelessness or immutability and impassibility, or you have to modify your understanding of God's love being directed at creation. Do you remember what my counter-argument was that, like why I don't understand why that is a substantive critique? Do you what? Do you remember what I said? To which part? Well, you said I gave you a dichotomy that, like, you have to modify either either belief. So, no, but do you one? remember what I said? Why I don't find the argument convincing? Uh, I specifically uh, said I don't find it convincing because I just I can I can env- envision a scenario in which, like, I really love somebody even prior to their existence. And I, and I'm just, I'm just like, as I envision the scenario, it just seems like my love wouldn't change whether such a being existed or didn't exist. And we can think of this when, so for instance, when somebody passes away, my love for such an entity doesn't diminish in it anyway. So I just don't find the argument very convincing. Yeah, because you already, the person already existed. But 
what is what is your point? The person doesn't exist anymore, right? So the person you're you're telling me they that they do. For, well, I mean, presumably you believe they have life you, after death, right? You had prior knowledge of their existence. So if you yeah. were to say I, I can love somebody whether they existed or not, meaning they never existed, so I would exactly. question. Exactly. There you go, you, James. Yeah, you're getting the point. You're seeing the difference. Yeah, that's the no, point. But you said, and the point you said is you're, order for you're me missing to love somebody, the intentional I aspect. There's an intentional aspect of love in the way that we humans understand love, in which my love is intentionally directed at my wife or another family member or whatever it is. And even after they die, presumably, if you believe in life after death, then you can still maintain that. But if you if they never existed, and that my love would be the same whether they existed or not, that's just not equivalent. Okay. So there's just a couple of hidden presuppositions in the argument, though. It seems to me like, okay, your argument is that in order to love somebody, you need a relation, like you need a, relation, a relationship, or sorry, relation towards some entity. But it just seems to me like if person A exists between time periods X1 and X2, after X2, that person doesn't exist anymore. Therefore, the relation couldn't exist anymore. And after X2, what are you related to? You're related to the person after their death. To the person you after believe, their death. You believe. Okay, well, then why can I say that God to is the, related you to the person praying, you after believe in their praying birth? to the dead saints? Okay, so then why can I use the same type of argument to say that? Um, God is impassable, but he's related to the person after they're born. I'm j because I just told you that that is excluded by the church. They say that God is not really related to creation. But your argument for that was that, okay, when Aquinas says love, he's not really meaning love. He just means goodwill, or sorry, willing good towards something. But that That's entity doesn't exist. And therefore, God can't have any type of relationship or, sorry, relation. But I'm saying, yeah. okay, let's take a perfectly symmetrical scenario in which you're related to something which doesn't exist anymore, like a deceased person. And I asked you, how are you able, able to relate to that person? And you said, oh, well, the way you were able to relate is you relate to a person, to a person who doesn't exist anymore, but they were alive. Well, okay, that's perfectly symmetrical. God is symmetrical. related to a person who will be alive. No, he's not. <laughs> That's the okay, point. No, he's you can not. Say, okay, got it. You can, say, you can say that God is really related to creation and you would just be denying the Catholic position. It, that You can do that. At this point, I don't you think you're listening position? to your understanding what I'm saying. I am listening to what you're saying. You're you're yeah, positive. But you're not you. understanding. You're pausing. Yes, I am understanding you. I'm tracking the conversation very well. You're saying first you started off by saying, well, God could be related to creation eternally, uh, in his own mind or however you want to frame it. But if if creation never exists, and it because presumably you believe that creation is a free act of God, that he's not compelled by some necessity of his nature or his will to create. And so if his love is identical, whether he creates or not, then it lacks an intentional component behind will, be, I'm sorry, behind his love, which is required, which is what we talked about when we say that we love something. It's not just me causing the good for something else accidentally without intention. That's not what love is. There's an intentional directedness at something else outside of myself. Okay. As far as I understood, now your argument is that because creation is contingent, therefore, there's some asymmetry between the scenario in which you existed and you cease to exist, but I still love such and such and such a person, and the scenario in which God creates something in the future, um, and but he he loves that person prior to creation. Uh, do you think though that? Um, any person's existence is necessary. Like, let's say somebody existed in the past. Let's say I love my wife or something like that. And um, and the, my wife dies one day. Well, my wife's existence isn't necessary. My wife's existence was contingent because it could have been the case that she was never born. So then 
So then, according to, if I was to take your argument, I could never love my wife after after her death, because now I'm only related to contingent ent entity. No, that's not the argument. The argument is that your love for your wife is different versus when she doesn't exist or when you don't know about her and when you actually are acquainted with her. That's the argument. Oh, okay. So this has to do with acquaintance, right? Yeah, if she does not exist, or you don't know anything about her, how are you going to be related to something that doesn't exist? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. I, I, I start to see the uh, logic in, in the argument. But it just seemed like you shifted from, from um, to now you're speaking about acquaintance. Okay, well, oh, so, so wait, isn't God omniscient under your view? By omniscient, do you mean God is acquainted with all propositions, including anything he can be acquainted with? Yes. Uh, I think God knows all true propositions and he doesn't know any false ones. Okay. Do you think God is acquainted with all facts? It depends what you mean by that. If you mean by facts, uh, like, for example, the fact that I exist, right? Is that what you're speaking about? Yeah, the fact that you exist, the fact what mental yeah. states you're going to have, the fact that um, you're going to be like, I don't know, like X, Y, and Z, things like that. Yeah. I assume you're not an open theist. No. Okay. So then, um, obviously, I'm not, a, not an omniscient being. So prior to me meeting my wife, I'm not acquainted with any of her qualities, right? I'm not acquainted with her with the way she is, what she's going to do, X, Y, and like, blah, blah, blah. So do you see how there's an asymmetry about like, oh, sorry, do you see why it's incoherent to say I'm going to love my wife prior to meeting her? Because like, I literally wow. know nothing about her. But do does you see, God, if I knew God everything have... about my wife, what she's going to do, yeah. what she's like, what she, what, and like if all her future actions, I wouldn't say it's incoherent to say I love my wife prior to meeting yeah. her. I think you're I think you're missing out on the point. The problem is not eternality, right? The problem is a modal concern. So is God's knowledge of you necessary? Um I'm undecided on that. Okay, yeah, well that's that's relevant to the topic. Because if God's knowledge of you is necessary, then you have to explain how you don't have some type of modal collapse in which everything exists necessarily and if it is contingent then that means god is different across possible worlds in which case it proves my point which i was saying earlier about god's love that his love would have to be different in a world in which he knows that you do exist or you will exist versus versus a world in which you don't exist and never will exist isn't isn't that only if you uh, treat um indexical sorry time as an indexical that is you say well god's knowledge in this world would be let's say there's an actual world and there's a possible world and in the actual world god thinks hey in this world um well, xyz happens and then there's another possible world in which god thinks hey in this world xyz happens but is, isn't that just like saying um the term this Sorry, let me think about this a little bit because I, I think David Lewis spoke about um, like he treats certain words as indexicals, which is and just entails absurd consequences that every world is real, like the actual actual world. Every every possible world is real, but a certain other yeah, people. Yeah, you don't cheat. believe that, right? Of course not. But other people <laughs> treat time words related to time not as indexicals, but. Um, they treat it in a different way, which doesn't entail the same absurd consequences. I'm, I'm going to have to just read up on this a little bit because I've heard this objection before, and I, I think there's a good argument against it. Okay, I'm, I'm willing to hear what that actually is. But my point is, my understanding of love is quite clear that you can take a scenario in which, um, and I, actually I'm going to read a quote from, 
from Stephen Nemesh, who actually left this position because of this, where he says, suppose I'm walking, suppose I'm, I'm sorry here. For example, it is true that someone who loves me will bring about all things that are good for me. But love means more than simply causing what is good for another. Suppose I am wandering lost in the desert and an earthquake causes the ground to open up and fresh water to pool, saving me from death. The earthquake caused something that is good for me, but, but it can hardly be said to love me for that reason. What is missing is an element of intention. The earthquake does not mean to do good for me, and therefore it does not love me. In the same way, if God does not mean to do good for me, and he cannot if he cannot be particularly ordered toward me, then it cannot be said that he loves me. At most, he can be said to bear a formal resemblance to someone who does love me by the way by way of the effects he produces, although the very thing that makes it to be love, namely the positive intention to do good to me, is missing from God as a matter of necessity. Yeah, yeah, great. Okay, so the, so I, I think the, the argument, you, sorry, your argument again contains some hidden presuppositions. It's that if creation is contingent, then God's knowledge would be different in all possible worlds. Like, let's say you went to possible world X. In that world, God's knowledge would be different from the actual world or something like that. Uh, but that's if you treat the actual world as, as an indexical, you say, um, hey, in, in, the, in the world we actually live in, the actual world would refer to this one. But in another possible world, the, the term actual world would refer to that possible world. So it's just treating the, world, the word actual world, world as an indexical. But I don't, I don't treat that word as an indexical. I think it refers, when you, say, when you speak about the actual world, it's more like a rigid designator that refers to, a, to, to the same world in any possible world. It just refers to the one world which is actual. Um, so, so that entails that God's knowledge wouldn't be different in other possible worlds. He would know that the actual world is, is the one, is this one. Um, other possible worlds are, um, yeah, anyway. I, I think, I'm pretty sure that's the, that's the counter argument. No, that's not my main, my main objection. It's very simple that love necessarily has an intentional aspect to it and without that intentional aspect it's not what we mean by love and it's certainly not at least what it sounded like from you as what you meant by a loving relationship with god in your initial statement yeah yeah i understand i understand that's the argument but that's just a reassertion of your original argument so do you we, deny we that went through a couple of objections that? and counter objections no so i haven't heard you respond to that. that do you deny that yeah. there's an intentional aspect to love well, I, intentional, I just mean related, relational aspect. And yeah, I ask you, you well, that. if you think love is a relational aspect, how can you be related to something that doesn't exist anymore? And you said, oh, you're related to a person who no, exists. No, I'm asking you and if ask you believe you, that or not. So we can well, first let me move just on. Finish. No, because you're not answering the question. You, well, and then I ask you, well, then how, why can I say God is related to the person who's about to, who, who will exist, um, who would exist or whatever? And you said, well, that's incoherent because how could you be, how could you love your wife that you never met? And I said, okay, but that's because I don't know any, anything about my wife that I haven't met. That's not applicable to God because God is omniscient. He knows all true facts about what such an entity would look like. And you said, well, that's just incoherent because in all possible worlds, God's love would be different or God's knowledge would be different. And I'm giving you the counter argument that you, that just assumes the actual world, that word is an indexical as opposed to a rigid designator. No, that's you again. You still haven't actually addressed my argument. My question to you is: Do you believe that love is necessarily intentional? And if yes, is God's love intentional? I mean, I, I, I think, I think I already answered that. No, just say yes or no. Is God's love intentional, and is it really related and directed at creation? Um. Yeah. Okay. Then you've just restated again that you reject the Catholic position, which is that God is not really related to creation. So you can take that position, but my argument from the beginning was based on that this is the Catholic view. And I already read out from Aquinas that God is not really related to creation. Okay. 
I don't think you're understanding what I'm saying at this point, so I'm just gonna have to bow. I out. am, but you're gonna but have to buy you. out because you bow out because you don't have a response actually to the objection. You're just actually restating that you believe that there is a necessary component of love, which is intentional aspect of it, and that God has that. And I'm saying, fine, I actually believe that, and I'm granting that. But your position in terms of your Catholic views cannot actually uh, afford that. Now, you can take that position. That's fine. Yeah, well, but you're I not stated that from the, the very get go that I made, which is that you're presupposing a hidden presupposition in, in all There's your. There's no hidden presupposition. The presupposition is, that the is simple. World is, is the presupposition is simple that God is not really related to creation under the Catholic view, and that uh, love entails a real relation. Those are okay, the assumptions. Sure, sure, sure. If I may say one last thing, though. So, if you treat the actual world as not as a rigid designator, but something that that is an indexical that's irrelevant that to my by argument. S5, that's irrelevant to my argument. By S5 modal logic. You're just repeating every, the same statement. Every possible statement. world is real. You just, just can't let me speak, the same, right? Yeah, because you're repeating okay, the okay, same okay. statement, Goodbye. which is irrelevant to my initial argument. That's the point. Yeah, he always does the same thing. It's kill screen. That, uh, I, I mean, you would ask him for, you know, yeah. and he would just repeat the claim and bring up something relevant or <clears throat> some jargon that no one's ever heard of before. No, I understand the point, what he's saying about possible worlds and rigid designation. I understand that, but that's irrelevant. All I'm saying is that the Catholic view assumes that... God is not really related to creation, which I read out a quote from Aquinas to substantiate that, and that which he already agreed, that in terms of love, there's a necessary aspect of it, which is intentional. There's a directedness towards something other than yourself. And if that's the case, and he agrees with that, then he simply cannot affirm, uh, or affirm the Catholic view. Well, you simply just don't understand, Jake. Let me give you a billion analogies and we'll see which ones actually match up. Turns out, yeah. <laughs> analogies forever. Sorry. Because actually, I think that the Catholic position would be like, well, it's, it really isn't like love. It's just, he wouldn't, he can't affirm it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, but they, they but... But I did read. See, see, I'm trying to be fair because I also, I also read from Aquinas where he says that God does love creation and He loves all things, right? But you have to understand that in context when He explains what that means. He simply means willing the good of another, right? But there's no intentional aspect to it. It just means that God created, and that's what His love is. There's no relation yeah. between God and creation. That's the point. Yeah, they I think a lot of like the the really good Catholics will tell you, God's just like not even really a person, not in any sense that we would recognize. It's hard to even yeah. say he's an agent. Yeah, but the problem is, is that that undercut his initial uh, polemic against Islam, or what he thought was a polemic against Islam in the beginning, and what he was trying to come with, which is the typical Christian thing that oh jesus loves you and god loves you and you know this you know you muslims don't have a um this lovey-dovey relationship with god and so that's the problem so that's the reason why i brought it up is because it undercuts his entire apologetic